Hey guys, Brian Forstall, Pretty BTV. I'm going to start some lessons, uh, beginner lessons. So basically, there'll be section one lessons because I plan to do a lot of different style lessons. Today, I'm just going to run over the G, the D, and the C. So I'm not going to cover tuning or theory or anything else like that, although those are important. Um, I, we just can't go over everything at one time. So we're going to start with a G, D, and a C. So people don't want to start playing songs, want to sit on the beach, want to sing for their girlfriend or boyfriend or that kind of thing. That's what you want to do. If I take a G, D, and a C, give you a quick idea. I've got a knock, knock, knocking on that one's door. Or I've got, and I'm already gone. There's probably 30 other songs I can think let alone the hundreds of songs that just use these three chords. The G, the D, and the C are the 1, 4, and 5 of the key of G. They're the primary chords, the most important ones of the Do, Re, Mi. And we'll go over that in future lessons. So let's get right down to business. The pick is held on the first joint of the index finger. The thumb clamps over, leaving the arrow towards the string bed. And your first string is, uh, your wrist is loose, but the pick is held pretty firmly. Um, your first string is the thinnest. You're going to rise all the way up through the sixth string, which is the fattest string, okay? So, you've got your G chord, okay? You've got your frets running this way, and you're gonna arch your fingers high, because if you don't arch your fingers very high and come down with the fingertip onto right behind the fret, almost looks like you're on top of it, but you're behind it, just millimeters. And um, otherwise, you're not gonna get a clear sound. If you're laying flat, you're gonna get dead notes. You want your thumb to be in the middle or high, as high as possible, actually, over the neck, but not to the left, not to the right. Um, you want to keep your fingers arched, though, so if you have to lower your thumb to arch them, you do need to do that. But keep your thumb high. If you can, you'll see great guitar players from Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan's, um, you know, Jimmy Page, you know, you name it. They're, you'll see them choking a lot, and that's good, but you want to definitely arch your fingers. So, but let's run these chords. The G is the first finger in the second fret on string five, right behind the fret, arched high. Second finger is in the third fret on the sixth string, right behind the fret, arched high. And your third finger is down in the same fret as your middle finger, third fret, first string. That's your G chord. Your D chord is actually your first finger in the second fret as well. On string three, your second finger is in the second fret on the first string. And your third finger is on the second string in the third fret. That's your ring finger. Now, the D is hard to get clean, so you're going to have to work at it. But just do it. You'll get there. It just takes a little time, okay? So put in, put in the time. You'll get there. Um, the C chord is the first finger in the first fret now. So we're in the first fret, arched high, right behind the fret on string two. Second finger is in the second fret on string four. Third finger is in the third fret on string five. And you've got your... And you're going to strum five now. On the D, you're actually, you should be strumming four down because that's the D, that's the naming tone of the chord. If you put the A in there, that's uh, the fifth string. That's okay, actually, because a D chord is D, F sharp, and A, and we'll cover the theory later, but that's having a fifth in the bass, and that's okay. But if you have the sixth string in there, it's not going to sound good at all. So you, uh, a lot of times you'll see someone come over with their thumb and touch it. That way, if they strum it by accident, it's muted. But... Um, I usually tell a lot of beginners, just strum them all. And even if the six string's in there, it's not right. I'm not saying that. But it's hard to strum just five down when you're a beginner. So Because we want to learn a rhythm right away, too. So let's say we got our G, our D, and our C. The very next thing we want to get is with the right hand. Is in, Most songs are in 4-4, four, four, meaning 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that'd be 1, 2, 3. But that's boring. So you'll get bored real fast doing that. So what we're going to do is go one, two, three, and four, and on every single chord. Now that's, in layman's terms, that's down, 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 up, down, up. And I'll go ahead and do that again. Down, 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 up, down, up. And now I'll do it on all three chords, G to D to C. Down on the G would be down, 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 up, down, up, down. chords. Another quick thing before we close this lesson is you might want to just do one strum per chord because to change these chords quickly is what gets most people. They usually can hold the chord and it can sound good, but 
they usually can't change quickly to the next chord, especially the end of that rhythm is down, up, down, up. So you have a down, 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 up, down, up, and you're right on the next chord. That's very difficult to do. So if you do one strum and one strum and one strum each time, you're forcing those changes. So this is uh, Brian Forstall, Free to Be TV. I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, my email is brianforstall80 at gmail.com if you want to study with me personally or ask me some questions. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.